My boyfriend claims he's just a morning person, but waking me up every weekend is starting to feel like something more sinister. Am I overreacting or is this a red flag? I'm 32 years old and my boyfriend Mark is 34. We've been together for almost two years and he moved in with me this past January. Our relationship has been full of love and shared experiences, but like any couple, we have our differences. One of the most prominent differences is our sleeping habits. I've always been someone who cherishes my sleep, especially on weekends. During the work week, I wake up at 7 a.m. to get ready for my job. However, weekends are my sanctuary, a time when I can catch up on rest and enjoy a leisurely start to my day. I usually sleep in until around 9.30, rarely pushing it to 10 a.m., and it's almost unheard of for me to sleep any later than that. For me, sleeping in is a rare luxury, a way to recharge and unwind from the week's stresses. Mark, on the other hand, is the quintessential morning person. Regardless of the day, he's up at 7 a.m., bright-eyed and ready to start his day. This difference in our morning routines was a point of mild contention early in our relationship. It wasn't anything serious, more of a light-hearted acknowledgement that one of us loved the mornings and the other did not. When Mark moved in with me, I thought we'd find a balance. I made it clear that I'm happy to wake up early for planned activities. If he suggests grabbing breakfast at 9 a.m., I'll set my alarm for 8 a.m. without complaint. I'm only keen on sleeping in when there are no plans, which happens maybe two or three times a month. Despite this understanding, Mark has a habit of waking me up early even on the days I've set aside for extra sleep. It started with what seemed like small, considerate gestures. On days when we had plans, he'd wake me up earlier than necessary. For example, if we were meeting friends at 11 a.m., he'd wake me up at 8.50, even though we were only 15 minutes away from the meeting place or he'd come in and wake me up at 9 a.m. to help unload groceries, even if he had only picked up a few items. Sometimes he'd wake me up to take our dogs to the park, insisting that it was time to get moving, even though I'd planned to wake up 15 minutes later. Every time I'd get irritated and ask why he couldn't trust me to get up on my own, I reassured him that I was responsible enough to set an alarm and wake up in time for our plans. His reasons were always varied and often seemed unnecessary, leading me to feel increasingly frustrated. I started to wonder if there was a deeper reason behind his behavior, something more intentional and perhaps even manipulative. During the week, our lives follow a predictable rhythm. I wake up at 7 a.m., groggy, but ready to tackle the day ahead. My job demands punctuality and I've become accustomed to the early mornings. I have my routine down to a science. I wake up, take a quick shower, dress and grab a light breakfast before heading out the door. Mark, meanwhile, is already up and buzzing around the apartment. His job allows for more flexibility, but his internal clock is unyielding. By the time I'm up, he's already finished his morning jog, showered, and is often halfway through a cup of coffee while reading the news. Despite our different morning tempos, we've found ways to coexist harmoniously during the week. Our mornings are a blend of quiet moments and brief interactions, with Mark often preparing a cup of coffee for me as I rush to get ready. It's our little routine, and while I'm envious of his morning energy, I appreciate the small gestures that make my mornings a bit easier. Weekends, however, are a different story. For me, weekends are sacred. I relish the thought of not having to wake up to an alarm, the luxury of rolling over and drifting back to sleep without a care in the world. Sleeping in until 9.30 or 10 a.m. is my way of recharging. These few extra hours of rest are crucial for my mental and physical well-being. They help me reset and face the new week with a renewed sense of energy and purpose. Mark, on the other hand, remains consistent. He's up at 7 a.m., even on weekends. Initially, this difference seemed trivial, just another quirk of our relationship. But as time went on, it became clear that our differing sleep schedules were more than just a minor incompatibility. Take, for instance, a typical Saturday. After a long week, I look forward to a leisurely morning. But Mark, with his boundless energy, has other plans. One Saturday, he decided we should meet friends for brunch at 11 a.m. The night before, I agreed and set my alarm for 8.30 a.m., giving myself plenty of time to wake up, get ready, and still enjoy a bit of a lie-in. Despite this, Mark woke me up at 8.50 a.m., a full 40 minutes before my alarm, insisting we needed to get going. Groggy and annoyed, I checked the clock and pointed out we had plenty of time. His response? Better to be ready early. Another weekend, Mark woke me up at 9 a.m. to help unload groceries. I had done the grocery shopping two days prior and it seemed unnecessary for him to make a special trip for a dozen items. Nevertheless, he insisted I get up and help put them away. My frustration was palpable, but I complied, albeit grudgingly. His reasoning was always practical, but it felt like an invasion of my precious sleep time. One particularly irritating instance involved our dogs. We both love taking them to the park, and it's a routine we cherish. However, on a Sunday morning, Mark woke me up at 9.15 a.m. saying, it's time to get moving, babe. We should take the dogs to the dog park. I had planned to wake up at 9.30 a.m., just 15 minutes later, 
but his insistence left me irritated. Why couldn't he wait those extra minutes? These instances started to pile up, each one chipping away at my patience. I had made it clear that I needed my sleep, that I would set my alarm and wake up in time for any plans we had. Yet Mark's pattern of waking me up early continued unabated. Each time I asked why he couldn't trust me to wake up on my own, his answers varied but never seemed to justify the disruption. I tried different approaches to address the issue. I communicated my need for sleep more assertively, explaining how these interruptions were affecting my mood and well-being. I even asked if there was something deeper at play, perhaps anxiety about being late or a need for constant activity. But his responses remained superficial, focused on the immediate reasons for waking me up. As these wake-up calls became more frequent, my reactions grew more intense. What started as mild irritation turned into outright frustration. I began to dread the weekends, anticipating the inevitable disruption of my rest. Each early wake-up felt like a small betrayal, a disregard for my clearly stated needs and boundaries. This ongoing conflict over our sleep schedules was becoming more than just a minor annoyance. It was a source of tension that highlighted deeper issues in our relationship, issues that we would eventually need to confront if we were sh we were to move forward harmoniously. The early wake-up calls continued, each one adding a layer of frustration to our weekends. Despite my attempts to communicate my needs clearly, Mark's actions seemed to disregard my requests. Each instance felt like a small erosion of my personal time, making me increasingly resentful. One Saturday, we had plans to meet friends for brunch at 11 a.m. The night before, I explicitly told Mark that I would set my alarm for 8.30 a.m., giving us plenty of time to get ready and arrive at the restaurant. Despite this, I was jolted awake at 8.50 a.m. by Mark gently shaking my shoulder. We'd better get going, he said. We have to meet our friends at 11. Groggy and irritated, I glanced at the clock and pointed out that it was barely 9 a.m. and the restaurant was only 15 minutes away. Why do we need to leave so early? I asked, trying to keep my frustration in check. Better to be ready early than rushing around, he replied with a shrug. Although his intentions seemed practical, the early wake-up felt unnecessary and intrusive. I had been looking forward to those extra 40 minutes of sleep, and now they were gone. My mood was soured for the rest of the morning and our brunch with friends felt strained as I tried to mask my irritation. Another weekend, Mark decided to go grocery shopping early in the morning. I had done the shopping just two days prior, so there wasn't much we needed. Nevertheless, at 9 a.m., he was at my bedside, gently nudging me awake. Hey, can you get up and help me unload the groceries, he asked. Still half asleep, I mumbled. What groceries? I just went shopping. I picked up a few things we needed, he replied, already heading to the kitchen. I dragged myself out of bed and went to help, only to find that he had bought a dozen items, none of which were urgent. The frustration bubbled up again. You couldn't wait until I got up on my own, I asked, trying to keep my tone even. I thought it would be faster if we did it together, he said, as if that made perfect sense. Yet another time, on a peaceful Sunday morning, Mark woke me up at 9.15 a.m., insisting we take the dogs to the park. It's time to get moving, babe, he said, patting my shoulder. The dogs need their exercise. I had planned to wake up at 9.30 a.m., but those extra 15 minutes of sleep were precious to me. Why can't we wait a little longer, I asked, my voice tinged with frustration. It's better to go early before the park gets crowded, he replied, seemingly oblivious to my annoyance. These incidents were becoming a pattern and each time my irritation grew. I tried to communicate my needs more clearly, telling Mark that I valued my sleep and would appreciate it if he let me wake up on my own. I reassured him that I was responsible enough to set an alarm and get up in time for our plans. Despite my efforts, the early wake-ups continued. One evening, I decided to address the issue head-on. Mark, I need to talk to you about something that's been bothering me, I began, trying to keep my tone calm and non-confrontational. I really appreciate that you want to spend time together and get things done, but waking me up early on weekends is starting to wear on me. I've asked you multiple times to let me sleep in when we don't have plans. Can we please find a way to compromise? He listened, but his response was dismissive. I'm just trying to be helpful, he said with a shrug. I don't see what the big deal is. We get more done this way. Frustration boiled inside me. It is a big deal to me, I replied, struggling to keep my voice steady. I need that extra sleep to recharge. It's affecting my mood in our relationship. Mark seemed unconvinced. I think you're overreacting, he said. It's just an hour or so. You can't let that ruin your day. Feeling unheard and dismissed, I decided to drop the subject for the moment, hoping he would eventually understand my perspective. But the following weekend, the pattern repeated. After a busy week at work, I was looking forward to a relaxing Saturday morning. I told Mark the night before that I intended to sleep in, as we had no plans until the afternoon. He seemed to understand, or so I thought. At 9 am I was once again woken up by Mark, this time gently flicking my nose. Time to get going, he said cheerfully. We should take advantage of the morning. That was the final straw. I snapped. Mark, I've had enough, I exclaimed, tears welling up in my eyes. I've told you over and over that I need my sleep. Why can't you respect that? Taken aback by my outburst, Mark tried to defend himself. I'm just trying to be productive and helpful, he said, his tone defensive. You're overreacting to something small? It's not small to me, 
I shot back. You're disregarding my needs and making me feel like my boundaries don't matter. The argument escalated with both of us raising our voices and airing our grievances. Mark accused me of being grumpy and ungrateful while I accused him of being controlling and dismissive. The tension that had been building for months finally erupted, leaving both of us emotionally drained. After the heated exchange, I retreated to the bathroom, tears streaming down my face. I felt exhausted, not just from the lack of sleep, but from the constant battle to have my needs respected. When I came down an hour later, Mark tried to downplay the situation, suggesting that my reaction was childish and that I needed to calm down. His words stung, deepening the rift between us. You need to really think about why you do this and come talk to me when you're ready, I said, my voice trembling with emotion. We managed to get through the rest of the day, hosting our Mother's Day lunch with a facade of normalcy. But the underlying tension was palpable, and Mark's avoidance of any real conversation only added to my frustration. The unresolved conflict cast a shadow over our interactions, making me question the foundation of our relationship. In the days that followed, I couldn't shake the feeling that Mark's actions were more than just inconsiderate. I began to wonder if there was a deeper, more manipulative intent behind his behavior. Oh, was he trying to control me to dictate how I spent my time? Or was it simply a case of mismatched priorities and a lack of understanding? As I mulled over these questions, I knew that we needed to address the issue head on. Our relationship was at a crossroads and we couldn't move forward without finding a resolution that respected both of our needs. It was time for a serious conversation, one that would determine the future of our relationship. The lead up to Mother's Day was a whirlwind of activity. I had spent most of Saturday cleaning the house from top to bottom, making sure everything was spotless for the lunch we were hosting for both our mothers. It was important to me that the day went smoothly, and I wanted to show our moms how much we appreciated them. In addition to cleaning, I spent hours in the kitchen prepping food so that on Sunday, all we had to do was pop the dishes in the oven. By the time Saturday evening rolled around, I was exhausted but satisfied with the work I'd done. As we settled into bed that night, I expressed my relief to Mark, I'm so glad everything is ready for tomorrow. I said with a tired smile. I can't wait to sleep in until 10. It's going to be so nice to finally get some rest. Mark seemed to understand, nodding in agreement. Totally, he said, which reassured me that he wouldn't disturb my much-needed sleep. Sunday morning arrived, and I was deep in a restful slumber, enjoying the rare luxury of a worry-free morning. But my peace was shattered when I felt a gentle but insistent flick on my nose. Groggily opening my eyes, I saw Mark leaning over me, a cheerful expression on his face. Time to get going, he said, his voice far too chipper for the early hour. We have people coming today, I glanced at the clock. It was 9 a.m. my heart sank, and a wave of frustration washed over me. Why did you wake me up? I asked, struggling to keep the irritation out of my voice. I told you I wanted to sleep until 10. We need to start getting ready, he replied, as if it were the most obvious thing in the world. The moms are coming over, we have plenty of time, I insisted, my voice rising with each word. I already did all the prep yesterday, we just need to put the food in the oven. Mark seemed unfazed. I thought it would be better to get an early start, he said casually. That's when I lost it. The exhaustion and the repeated disregard for my needs collided, and I felt a surge of anger and hurt. Tears began to well up in my eyes as I struggled to contain my emotions. Why can't you just let me sleep? I cried. I've told you so many times how important it is to me. Why don't you respect that? Mark looked taken aback by my outburst. You can't act like this because you didn't get an extra hour of sleep, he said, his tone dismissive. That's childish. His words felt like a slap in the face. I felt my frustration and hurt intensify and I couldn't hold back the tears. It's not just about the sleep, I said, my voice shaking. It's about you ignoring my needs and waking me up for no good reason. It's about not feeling heard or respected in our own home. Seeing that the conversation was only escalating, I retreated to the bathroom, needing some space to calm down and collect myself. The tears flowed freely as I sat on the edge of the bathtub, feeling a mix of anger, sadness, and exhaustion. I stayed there for an hour, trying to compose myself before facing Mark again. When I finally came downstairs, the atmosphere was tense. Mark looked up from his phone, his expression unreadable. You really need to think about why you're so upset, he said. It's just an hour of sleep. It's not just an hour, I snap. It's every single weekend. It's the constant disregard for what I need. It's you waking me up for things that could wait. It's the fact that you think my feelings are childish and don't matter. Mark's response was to shrug, which only fueled my frustration. I think you're overreacting, he said. I'm trying to be helpful. We have a busy day, and it's better to be up and ready. His dismissiveness made me feel even more isolated and misunderstood. Helpful, I repeated, incredulous. How is waking me up early helpful? I told you last night I needed this sleep. You said you understood, but you woke me up anyway. It's like you're doing it on purpose. I'm not doing it on purpose he retorted. I just think it's better to get a head start on the day. You always seem to take forever to get ready. The comment felt like another blow. So, this is about you thinking I'm not efficient enough, I asked, my voice rising. This is about you trying to control how I spend my mornings. Mark sighed, clearly exasperated. No, it's not about control. I just want to make sure we're on track. You're making this a bigger deal than it needs to be. 
I'm making it a big deal because it is a big deal to me, I insisted. You keep dismissing my feelings and needs. This isn't just about sleep, it's about respect and consideration in our relationship. Mark fell silent and I could see he was struggling to understand my perspective. I think we need to take a step back and really think about what's happening here, I said trying to de-escalate the situation. We can't keep having the same argument, it's tearing us apart. We managed to get through the Mother's Day lunch, putting on a facade of normalcy for the sake of our mothers, but the underlying tension was palpable. Every interaction felt strained and the unspoken conflict hung over us like a dark cloud. In the days that followed, Mark avoided any real conversation about what had happened. His avoidance only deepened my feelings of frustration and isolation. I began to question whether this was a pattern of behavior that would continue whether he truly couldn't see how his actions were affecting me, or whether there was a more manipulative intent behind his disregard for my needs. As I reflected on our relationship, I couldn't shake the feeling that this issue was more than just about our differing sleep schedules. It was about respect, boundaries, and communication. And it was becoming increasingly clear that if we didn't address these deeper issues, our relationship might not survive the strain. The days following our explosive argument on Mother's Day were marked by a palpable tension and awkwardness between Mark and me. We moved around each other like strangers in our own home, the air thick with unresolved issues and unspoken words. Mark's avoidance was evident. He seemed to go out of his way to avoid any meaningful conversation about what had transpired. His usual attempts at casual banter felt forced and fell flat, and I found myself growing increasingly resentful of his unwillingness to address the elephant in the room. Mother's Day itself, a day that I had been looking forward to, was overshadowed by the lingering effects of our argument. As our mothers arrived, Mark and I put on our best smiles, determined not to let our personal conflict ruin the occasion. However, the tension was hard to disguise completely. Our interactions were stilted, the warmth and camaraderie we usually shared replaced by a strained politeness. We served the lunch I had meticulously prepared the day before, each dish a reminder of the effort I had put into making the day special. Our mother seemed to sense that something was amiss, casting concerned glances our way. My mother, ever perceptive, pulled me aside at one point to ask if everything was okay. I forced a smile and assured her that it was just a minor disagreement, not wanting to delve into the details and spoil the day further. Throughout the lunch, Mark and I exchanged minimal conversation, our words carefully chosen to avoid triggering another argument. It was exhausting, maintaining the facade of normalcy when beneath the surface, a storm was brewing. The usual joy and laughter that accompanied our family gatherings were notably absent, replaced by an uncomfortable silence that even our mother's attempts at light-hearted conversation couldn't fully dispel. After our mother's left, the silence in the house was deafening. I sat on the couch, staring blankly at the television while Mark busied himself in the kitchen, cleaning up. The physical proximity did nothing to bridge the emotional distance between us. Each clatter of a dish or rustle of a plastic bag felt like an audible representation of the rift that had formed between us. In the days that followed, Mark's avoidance continued. He immersed himself in work and his usual routines and making himself scarce around the house. I, on the other hand, found it increasingly difficult to focus on anything else. The unresolved tension gnawed at me, making it hard to concentrate at work or enjoy activities that usually brought me peace. Sleep. The very issue that had sparked our conflict became elusive. I would lie awake at night, replaying the argument in my mind, trying to understand why Mark couldn't see how deeply his actions had affected me. We had several brief surface-level conversations, but none of them addressed the core issue. Each time I tried to broach the subject, Mark would deflect or minimize my concerns, insisting that I was overreacting. His dismissiveness only added fuel to the fire of my frustration. It felt as though he was deliberately ignoring my feelings, refusing to acknowledge the validity of my need for rest and respect for my boundaries. One evening, I decided to try once more to address the issue. I waited until we were both home and settled, hoping that a calm, uninterrupted setting would help facilitate a more productive conversation. Mark, we need to talk, I said, my voice tinged with the exhaustion of the past few days. He sighed, clearly weary of the topic. We've talked about this already, I don't know what else you want me to say. I want you to understand how this is affecting me, I replied, struggling to keep my voice steady. It's not just about the sleep, it's about feeling disrespected and unheard in our relationship. I need you to see that. Mark ran a hand through his hair, a gesture of frustration. I get that you're upset, but I'm not trying to disrespect you. I just think you're making too big a deal out of this. The familiar refrain of dismissal cut through me like a knife. It is a big deal to me, I said, my voice rising. You keep saying you're trying to be helpful, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels like you're ignoring my needs and disregarding what I've asked for. Maybe we just see things differently, he said with a shrug. I don't know how to make you see that I'm not doing this on purpose. His words felt like a wall between us, an impasse that we couldn't seem to overcome. The lack of resolution was suffocating, leaving me feeling more alone and unheard than ever. The ongoing discomfort seeped into every aspect of our daily lives casting a shadow over what should have been a time of joy and connection. The ongoing tension between Mark and me was unbearable. One evening I decided it was time to address the issue head-on. Mark, we need to talk, 
I said, my voice steady but firm. This situation is affecting us both, and we can't keep avoiding it. He looked up from his phone, a hint of reluctance in his eyes. Okay, he said, putting the phone down. What do you want to talk about? I need you to understand how your actions have been making me feel, I began. When you wake me up early on weekends, despite me telling you that I need to sleep in, it feels like you're disregarding my needs and boundaries. I feel disrespected and unheard. Mark sighed, leaning back in his chair. I'm not trying to disrespect you, he said. I just think it's important to start the day early and be productive. I'm doing it for us, not to upset you. But it is upsetting me, I countered, trying to keep my emotions in check. I need those extra hours of sleep to recharge. When you wake me up early, it feels like you don't trust me to manage my own time, Mark frowned. I get that you need sleep, but I just don't see why an hour here or there makes such a big difference. I thought we were a team, and I'm just trying to help us stay on track. It's more than just an hour of sleep, Mark. It's about feeling valued and respected. I need you to take my feelings seriously and stop dismissing them. Mark was silent for a moment, his expression conflicted. I guess I didn't realize it was affecting you this much, he admitted. I'll try to respect your need for sleep, but it might take some time to adjust. Feeling a mix of relief and lingering frustration, I nodded. I just want us to find a balance where both of us feel respected and heard. As the days turned into weeks, the unresolved tension continued to fester, a constant reminder of the growing divide between us. It became clear that without a significant breakthrough in our communication and understanding, our relationship would remain mired in this painful stalemate. And so I found myself at a crossroads, wondering how much longer we could continue like this and what it would take to bridge the gap that had formed between us. As the days passed, I found myself constantly reflecting on my relationship with Mark and his behavior. I loved him deeply, but his repeated disregard for my needs made me question whether his actions were intentional and manipulative. Was he genuinely trying to be helpful, or was there a deeper, more troubling reason behind his behavior? This uncertainty gnawed at me, making it difficult to fully trust his intentions. I considered various possibilities. Perhaps Mark had an ingrained belief that productivity equaled worth, and he couldn't understand why I valued sleep so much. Maybe he was anxious about managing time and ensuring we never missed any plans, even at the cost of my rest, but the unsettling possibility remained that he was exerting control over me, dictating how I should spend my time and subtly undermining my autonomy. This reflection led to an intense internal conflict. On one hand, I wanted to believe the best in Mark, trusting that his actions stemmed from a misguided sense of helpfulness rather than a desire to control. On the other hand, the pattern of behavior that made me feel disrespected and unheard could not be ignored. The lack of resolution and Mark's dismissive attitude towards my feelings only added to my frustration and confusion. After much soul-searching, I decided that I needed to address this issue head-on, with a clear plan for moving forward. I needed to set firm boundaries and communicate my needs more assertively. I resolved to have another serious conversation with Mark, emphasizing the impact his actions had on my well-being and our relationship. I would explain that my need for sleep was non-negotiable and that we needed to find a compromise that respected both our needs. Moving forward, I committed to standing up for myself and ensuring that my voice was heard while also being open to understanding Mark's perspective. If his behavior continued to disregard my needs, I knew I would need to reevaluate the relationship and consider whether it was truly healthy for me. As the days passed, I found myself constantly reflecting on my relationship with Mark and his behavior. I loved him deeply, but his repeated disregard for my needs made me question whether his actions were intentional and manipulative. Was he genuinely trying to be helpful, or was there a deeper, more troubling reason behind his behavior? This uncertainty gnawed at me, making it difficult to fully trust his intentions. 